Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, it's TPM5 here, back again with another NBA video. In today's video, I'm going to be previewing the Utah Jazz's offseason, look at some trade rumors, talk about some draft prospects as well, I think they have pick 30, talk about the free agency um, situation with Mike Conley, and also talk about their salary cap uh, you know, situation for the future as well. Uh, without further ado, let's get into the video. This season, the Jazz opened up throughout their first 10 games with a 6-4 record, which was a rather slow start compared to what we're used to. However, they picked up from there, winning the next uh, 9 games, and they proceeded to steamroll the NBA and had the best record in the league at 52-20. and 20. Uh, They did okay in the playoffs, but sadly their you know, time came to an end against the LA Clippers, and a combination of, um, you know, Quinn Schneider, you know, I guess having issues with Go Burr because you can't exactly it's it's difficult because you have to he's being paid so much and he's a key part of the team so you kind of have to keep him out there but there were times where he was hurting them on the rotations uh, you know Terrence Mann had 39 from open threes pretty much but um just a quick break guys I make NBA content two to three times a week and I'm doing these off-season previews daily the next one I'm going to make is about the Philadelphia 76ers so if you guys wouldn't mind subscribing it would help me out a lot and please like the video because that would help me out a ton as well. And now let's look at the salary cap table. The first thing you'll see is Mike Conley expiring. Uh, his $34.5 million deal expires. He's a key part of their team. They need to bring him back almost. Other, you know, obviously if he doesn't want to come back, explore some sign and trades. Now Rudy Gobert is with the team until 2026, and that's if he opts into his player option for 46.6 million uh, for the 2026 season. Uh, that deal, you know, it's something they kind of had to do as a key part of their, you know, during the regular season is a key part of why they win games and stuff. Uh, but yet to be proven that his, you know, play style and him himself, you know, works in the playoffs. Uh, there are obviously doubts around that. But look, he, it's a bit dramatic to say they should trade him, but his deal probably isn't good in the future, you know. It limits his team from trying to create some stuff. But we keep going down the list. Boyan Bogdanovic is uh, 19.5 million in 2023, is the last year of his deal. He's kind of getting up there in age, but they've also been exploring some trades for him as well, which we'll touch on a bit later. They have Jordan Clarkson, you know, the good six man all the way through until 2024, given that he opts into a player option for that season. Joe Ingles is expiring next season. Uh, same story with a few guys at the end of their bench as well on non-guaranteed deals. Now, it's Donovan Mitchell signed long-term as well, which is another key part for the team. Now, there was a little phase uh, during the off-season where he was kind of looking a bit unhappy, but I think that he should stay, and I think that he is kind of one of the guys, you know, he, a lot of his performance in the playoffs have kind of gotten overshadowed because he hasn't gone far. That series where he was going off against Jamal Murray, they were both kind of going both ways. And then also, you know, this you know, this time he you know had some great games these playoffs as well. So he's a great guy for them. You know, he's a key part of what they do, obviously. And if we have any Utah fans, how do you guys feel about the possibility? Because I'm about to talk about some trade rumors. How do you guys feel about the possibility of trading, you know, Joe Har uh Joe Ingles, Hurry, Bojan Bogdanovic and some of those guys that have been key to your rotation? but kind of do hold a bit of, um, you know, the salary cap. So what do you guys think? If you're any Jazz fans or any NBA fans watching, comment what you think about, you know, if the Jazz should trade them, and I'll get started on that now. So it's understood that around the NBA, the Jazz are, you know, considering trade offers for Bojan Bogdanovic, Joe Ingles, Royce O'Neal, and also the 30th pick in the draft this year. Uh, they're, they're in a bit of a difficult spot because they have a lot of those guys that do contribute to wins in the regular season, and they do help them have that, um, versat uh, you know, versatility. Uh, it, it will be interesting to see what the market does look like for those guys. I think that they could um, build, you know, they could probably build a bit more of a top-heavy team, which kind of is what it's, is needed these days in the NBA. I don't think those guys can get you, like, you know, an, a really, really good player. Like, when I say really, really, I don't, they're not going to be in a package for someone like Dame Lillard. But, you know, you could get something, you know, there could be something on the market, you know, maybe another all-star level guy, you know. I think that they would be wise to see what the market is like for those guys because they're on deals that do give them flexibility. You know, the Jazz is a team. They do give them flexibility. I think that one of those guys, uh, one of Ingles and Bogdanovich will get traded, I think. Uh, I think that it would probably make sense for them to try something. And Bojan Bogdanovich did prove before last year the bubble that he could score. He was you know, very good for them. And also part of the reason they could trade those guys to the shed salary so they can bring back Mark Conley it was a key piece for them. Obviously, his game six game and the elimination game wasn't good. I think he had five points and six turnovers. 
but overall he does take a lot of the playmaking pressure off of Donovan Mitchell, you know, the ball handling, and he's, you know, he's a calming veteran presence. I think that they'll end up moving some pieces around. I, I would say that Mike Conley is almost a lock to come back. It is worth knowing that the Mavs are interested in him as, uh, as well. Now looking at the draft, if the Jazz do choose to keep their pick, they should kind of draft someone that can shoot the ball. Now with it being the 30th pick, they're not going to get a guy that's going to be able to come in. You wouldn't expect the guy to come in and straight away and contribute a lot. But you know, it's a deep draft class, so there could be something for them to have. Someone I've liked the look of is Trey Murphy the uh, third. At Virginia, he showed great ends, uh, both you know, great ability on both ends of the floor to you know be a three and D guy, you know, a three and D light guy. I think that he can shoot the ball well, and he's an interesting uh, fit for them. You know, obviously, uh, there's no locks at that late in the draft, but they could maybe someone of value falls down. You never know. But that's it for the video guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe, if you have any Jazz fans or any, you know, any of you guys want to comment, please comment, tell me what your thoughts, you know, what you think the Jazz should do, and I'll catch you guys in the next video, peace out.